Hi, in this video I will show you how to put together this Grateful Gnome card, which is a box card from Simply Crafty SVGs. Okay, so here are the pieces. So this is a, these are the pieces, this is for the card, some panels, the uh, panels for the pumpkin house, and uh, all these little pieces. There's a lot of little pieces for the gnome. I tried to make it simplified and, and for this, but I liked it pieced together, it looked good. So this is print and cut. So I did a print and cut on this, just to show you what the card looks like. So um, we do have a print and cut uh, video, but this one is, there's two sets of hands in this file. So, you, so the default complete file comes with the pumpkin, with the gnome holding the pumpkin, and then there's another file in there with the uh, pumpkin pie. So that's up to you. It also comes with two printable tags. One says grateful, and one says uh, happy Thanksgiving. I print and cut with different colors. As you can see, I played around with the colors. Um, and this is the one I'm going to use for this card. So there's two of these. These are, print these are for print and cut only. Um, and you can see how you can make different different things with, these are a little bit larger, I'm going to use on a different card. So remember you can use these on different cards, but these were print and cut and I just changed the colors um, of it, so just so you know what you can do. So um, we'll start piecing some of these. We'll do the gnome and the house and the leaves um, to show you how that goes together and then we'll put the card together. The card piece is the easiest piece, so we'll put that aside. But, and this is the back panel. So this is the panel that goes so you can put your uh, a sentiment on the back. Oh, and this is a blank one. So I did a, I cut out a blank one so you could see that you could just do whatever you wanted. So you could do blank any color, you could use your pens, you could do print and cut, however you want to use it. So here, I have this little pick-me-up tool. So it's good to place really small items. It's from Silhouette. There's a couple different tools like this. Some people, you can, if you do diamond um, paint, painting, diamond dots, um, their tool's really good to pick up small items too. That's what I've been told. I haven't delved into that because I'm so busy with this. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put this aside. I'm just going to dump this out. So we'll do the big house first. So there's a print and cut of what we're going to piece together. So you can see what it looks like. And I tried to eliminate as many colors, try to put as many, the least amount of colors so it would be hard, not as hard to put together. Um, but um, I tend not to. I kind of look around the card and, and try to do that. So. so I was missing the yellow pieces, so I just added those. Um, for a reason, I thought I cut them out. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So here's the, there's one for the pie and one for the pumpkin. So let's put the gnome pieces together. Let's, so they're all in the same place. There's a gnome, there's a gnome. That's the leaves. I'm going to show you something with the leaves in a minute. The gnome. That's the um, pie. So this is going to be right here. So that's the first thing I would do, separate the pieces so you have them together. This is the pie. These are the house pieces. So you'll see these. Making sure that all the texture is up. The texture cardstock, it's textured on one side. This is the gnome. And the pumpkin. Okay, and so you want to just get all like for like together. Make sure I have everything. This is the pumpkin. And I have one extra shoe. Let me get rid of that. I did that on purpose. So this is this goes with the pumpkin. And then the leaves. So the leaves, so there we go. So there's a pumpkin pie. So the one that um, is the default is that one. And so we'll show you how to piece together all these. But if you want to, these just have little cut lines in them. So if you want to accentuate them, I just used a little Distressed Oxide. And I was using this little finger brush from iCrafter. So I just lightly put some brown on it. And then just ran over it 
to give those to accent the cut lines and the leaves. So that's that's up to you what you you can do that with pretty much any ink, but play around with it. Do extra leaves, see if you like the the look. So we'll start with let's just do the house since it's right in the middle. So we'll move this up here. So this is where this tool comes in handy. It has a little sticky at the end. If you've never used it before, I'm sure a lot of people have already seen it. I don't always use it, but um, sometimes I do on really small pieces. So like this one, we need to put together the doors. So I use this fine tip applicator with my or glitter glue. So I'm just gonna add glue to the back of this, lightly, very lightly. Then making sure it's upside down, so I'm going to put the texture side down. This is a slightly smaller. And then I'm just going to make sure that it's not showing on the sides. I made it smaller so you wouldn't see the yellow on the side. So we're going to do that with these as well. So when it's this small, you can use this, or there's something like a zig pen that's really good for really small items too. So you just want to be careful with the glue so it doesn't show go through. So this is this is like a my I like to do like the gnomes I like a certain way, so the problem is that it creates a lot of pieces, so that's why I tried to match it up. But I like the look of piecing, so that's what happens and that's why I continue to do what I do and you get so many pieces. But it's fun. But you could print and cut. There's some layered files for you. I'm just not putting the glue. I'm putting the glue on the top here. So you could use the tool. So I'm going to use the pick me up tool for the next part. So I'm just making sure that's in place before we push down. So this is going to go right there. And just make sure the texture side is up. I'm going to add a little glue here. And other than me trying to do that, we'll just click this up. And then you can use the other end to move it around if you needed to get it set in place. Then this, you could put it on the bottom edge, you can put it a little bit above the bottom. It's really up to your placement. And these two. So that will finish the house, so it will be ready when we put it on the card. And then we'll work on the leaves next. So the way I built it basically is for it to be overlapping. So this middle one, so I just put that middle one on first. They're all the same size, so you can put whatever color you want. And then um, you can go right that first or that first, whichever. Then the last one. So on the other one I had yellow on the left. I'll just put uh, yellow on the right here. Mix it up a little bit. And I find it's easier to put glue on small pieces like this first, but you have to be careful when it gets to overlapping because you may not know where to, you don't want to go too far over so it'll show. So there are the leaves. And we'll go ahead and put together the gnome. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and put the white piece on. 
And I'm just going to pick it up to make sure that I get it adjust it so I get those little side pieces lining up and the top. And I'm going to um, ink this a little bit white wise because it's it's going to show through the edge. So it's just my little sticky note trick trying to make sure I don't get too much ink on my so at the top I don't want too much of it showing next to the hat. So that's all I'm doing is the top part. And we'll put the hat on. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Again, be careful. You might want to put the glue on this. I'm just going to put the glue there. And light it up. Then we put the mustache on next. You just want to overlap, so I'm just going to put it on really lightly. And you could try to. I'm just going to place it right there. See, that's where those little. So you can see where the the background tells you where to place the the mustache. And then we're going to go ahead and dab a little glue in the middle for the nose. Get this nose here. I'm going to use. So once you get it placed, you can nudge it over with the other end. There's several tools you could use for this. Just this is a just one of several like this. And then I'm just going to um, put a dot of glue here, and a dot of glue there. Get the textured side up. Oops, put it upside down. So it takes time, but you know it's worth the look to me. I love the piece, piecing look. So it's worth the. It just gives it texture and dimension. So the last thing is you can choose the pumpkin, but remember the pumpkin is the default, and this is another file. So if you want the pie then you need to look in a different file. So you'll find it. It's named pie. But I'm going to let's piece together the pie pe one first. So this these I took a vanilla um, cardstock and then put the little pink on it because I didn't like the pinks I had. So that's how I colored the nose and the and the hands. So the way this is going to go is the white piece first. I had it a different way before, but that white piece was so small that it was a pain to put on. It was smaller than the nose and with that little dip at the top there. So line that up and then you want to put this down next. Light it up like that. And then you can eyeball where the pumpkin pie is going to go. So you could just do that. Or you can put it on the back of the other piece. I'm making sure I have the texture side up. And line it up. So when I piece these really small pieces, I was trying to make it easy so you didn't have like really teeny. So that's the way it's, why it's layered the way it is. So that's one option to hold a pumpkin pie, and, but we're not going to use that, so we're going to use the pumpkin. So the same thing, the big brown piece, so we'll start here, and you can kind of see where it is on the outline there. You could either use the tool or your fingers to line it up. And then we'll put this next larger piece on. So just go towards the bottom with the glue. 
You can go a little bit higher. I can put a little. You can see how high you can go based on the piece. And then this middle piece. Just flip it over and make sure the texture side. Oops. And line it up. And then you can go ahead and just we're going to pop it up with a uh, foam tape and then we'll put the card together. So the hard part's done. This is just putting it together. So we I get I got foam tape on this ready to go. We're going to go ahead and take the inserts. That's not the insert. The one with the tab is the insert, so that's the back. These ones with the tabs, this pumpkin one should be folding back like that, the tabs. This gnome one, you'll fold back and then you'll fold it up. So fold it forward and that, that creates the space we need in the card for even um, spacing for the inserts. So those are just pre-folding them. So we can go ahead and put the gnome on. You always pop that one up too, but I'm um, going to just put it flat, line it up. Gives it strength as well. So you can see from the back, you can see the hands sticking out, but I can try to get it lined up. And then we put this on. The leaves will go on the front. So if you want to do this because it's just easier to do it now than later. got glue on the front. I did get that off. Just lining it up. Just kind of feeling around to get it in the right place. Flipping it over tells me I'm there too. So I don't see it. I could have done this, but I just forgot to do a little bit of shading because I think it makes a difference. It's very slight, but I can add a bit, little bit more. Let me go ahead and add a little bit more ink. Normally I do that before, but just gives it a little dimension. We also have a green stem that you can't see, so we'll put that on. I forgot to put that on. Actually, I like it without it, so we're just going to leave it without the green stem. Now, nah, got to add it. I just misplaced it, so let me get that. This hasn't been my week, so it's been a little bit of a struggle getting these cards finished. And thus I've done things like this. So anyways, there's the stem because you know we need a green stem. But if you like it without, that's up to you. Just another piece to add. And it's not going correctly down, so let me go sideways. There we go. And then um, we can go ahead and I'm just going to ink this a little bit because I've got it off a little bit. Then we'll go ahead and add these two, these three panels. 
So this is a little bit weird. Um, it got wet, so when you're, I had a little water damage, but it won't show. I've had to cut off um, pieces before because I did that, but so this center is in the front. I like to wait until last to put the leaves and the tag on because it still flattens, but I like putting this on before just because I don't like messing with the bulkiness when I'm trying to glue together the card. But these are flat, so this is okay. This is from a fall die cuts with a view fall stack that I had. It was just a six by six. I wasn't going to do wood, but I kind of like the look. So now we can put together the card. Oh, and let me just uh, put this. This is optional, but if you have a dark card like this, there's a little something to put on the back. And it can go either way. I was using uh, texture cardstock, which I don't like to use for. Uh, the back of cards like this because it's not easy to to write on with a hand write but uh, anyways so there's the so that's the back this is the front so once you put that on the back so it's non textured side and you can tell because we have the house like this so the shape will be the same <clears throat> so this is the the back so we we want when it folds like that, we want it to be in the front, right? So we want it to be like this. So if you put that on first, you'll know that you have to glue it like this. So on the inside and upside down from the way you cut it. So you want to make sure you're seeing the opposite. So the chimney, the, if you glue it like this, the chimney, you should be seeing the back of the house. The chimney on the opposite side. So line it up. We're not going to close it. We're going to put the front one in first. So we're going. This is the front insert. So the way it'll go is, it glues right there. Oops, wrong, wrong, wrong way. Glues right there, and so when it turns around like this, like that. So this is the front. So we want to get just left of the fold so you can see the fold like that. So you fold these forward and we'll put a little glue right there. Or just you can you want to go up a little bit towards the top so we can see as much as the gnome. And then once you get it, you can see I just I don't go right up to it, I go a little bit to the right of it to give us a little leeway. And then before it dries, I just make sure it lays flat that way. So that's the front. So we'll fold it like that. And the back is like this. So you can see that it'll go like that. So here, it's the other way. Same thing. I'm just going to go a little bit to the right of that. You can go right up to it, but so I found that sometimes if you go too close and you fold over the other side, it it doesn't fold over right on the other side. So that's the reason why I say that. I used to go flush to it, but this seems to work better. So I'm going towards the top. I'm just going to fold it over and then adjust it so it's as straight as can be. It's uh, Actually, I think it got a little straighter than the gnome, so you can see they're kind of lined up. And they don't have to be lined up, just as long as they're kind of the parallel to each other. So now, if you flip it over, you can see like that. So the last step is to fold it over, oops, fold this over like this. So we went we're going to make sure, let's train this fold right here. Oops. This is getting stuck on it. Boy. So let's fold that over to help us. I'm going to fold that. 
So as before, this one folded back because that's the back one. And this one folds, just goes flat like that. So it folds, oops, goes like that, sorry. So it folds under. So this one folds like that, this one folds under. Let's go from this angle. It'll be easier. So now we can see this folds up. Let's make sure you see that. So that one needs to be folded up like that. That's where the glue go. And this one will be folded back, but you don't need to fold it back. It just needs to be flat. So we're going to line this up. I'm kind of lining up this bottom edge right here as I push down. Make sure that doesn't that's in place. So I just want you to see that it's how it works. And the last thing to do is to fold this under like that. Put it flat and then glue that tab. So basically we're gluing the tab like that underneath. So that's the last step. So you want to hold it long enough to get it adhered. So there you go. And it's bowing a little bit. Um, it shouldn't. That just means I didn't fold it properly at the end. So just so you know if that does that a little bit. But popping it back, it just goes with that one. So you can see the dimension. So I only have two inserts, but then I have that other one for just for vision dimension. So so we'll go ahead and put these on. So you can go like this, and you can put it above if you want to or one thing I just say don't go beyond this edge right here because when it's flat um, you can go the other way if you decide to go beyond the edge which you can you want to fold it to the right but if you fold it to the left to put it in the envelope you need to make sure you don't go beyond there so for dimension you can go up or you can go under so what I'm going to do on this card is just put glue on the bottom of it like the bottom half and I'm going to go up a little bit The other one, it didn't go as far up, but I feel like it gives it a little bit more balance. And then we'll pop this up. So... That's it. That finishes the card and it does fit into a standard uh, A2 envelope, which we have a free one in our basic envelope set. So um, I hope you enjoyed this card. And if you did, please give me a little thumbs up below and or subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.